you may remember the little template that I used for my zombie doll art journal page, the Hoodoo That Voodoo, or Hoodoo That Voodoo, you do, or whatever. Anyway, you remember the template that I used to create the zombie doll for the art journal page, and I said that it was based on this zombie doll template that I got from my good friend Gina Ahrens, and that in that video I said there'll be more on this template later. Well, that time is now. So, this is the zombie doll template that I got from Gina Ahrens. In fact, it's a complete download from Gina's Etsy store, and I'll put a link to this in the description area below this video. Um, these are what she calls art and zombie dolls. So these are art dolls that she did whilst during lockdown, um, or the main part of lockdown, dealing with the stress and the anxiety of being locked up in the house and not knowing what was going to happen with the pandemic and the virus and all that kind of stuff. Um, Gina used it as a, um, I would say a coping mechanism, but as a way, a cathartic exercise. She made some zombie dolls, uh, and I'll show you some of the photographs that she's included in the download as well, um, that all had um, something to do with or related to um, how she was feeling about the lockdown. And she created a full set of these zombie dolls um, and created a coffin shaped sized box in which to put all these bad and negative thoughts into and then she could close the lid on it. It was a really good like cathartic exercise, a way of purging um, like negative feelings and anxieties and stuff. Um, and then she created this digi download um, on her Etsy store with pictures and patterns. There's also some lovely kind of um, angel dolls as well that you can create to hang on a Christmas tree or to give away um, as gifts and that kind of thing. So part of the template um, that she's got of the mermaids in here as well. So you've got angels, mermaids um, and zombie dolls, I believe and other ones that you can do as well. That's painted on, I think, on fabric. Um, so anyway, so onto the templates. So I've stapled this the wrong way, haven't I? So that's the mermaid zombie. And that's got bits and pieces with it, like ribs, eyeballs, eyelids, broken hearts, and that kind of stuff that you can use just to cut out. This is the one for the zombie doll. Et voila. So that is that one, and as you can see, I've printed it out on card already and cut it out. I've also cut out the head from the template too. But also, if you wanted to make one that had a separate head, so you could do a body and a separate head, stitch them together. Um, there's also a little template there for a skull uh, and a blood drip. But there's also, if you wanted to do the angels, there's also one for the mermaid there, angels' wings and the bodies. Um, and what's on this one? Oh yeah, bodies as well and a face for the angels. So that's the Digi Download Kit that's available from Gina's Etsy. I know this sounds like a plug for her, but this is what I've used. And I'll show you what I've done with this in a minute. Um, it's got a list of materials and all different types of stitches that are used. You don't have to follow, follow all of these if you don't want to. Just do what you know. And then there's instructions and tips for making them. It's a cool one. So I'm going to make a zombie doll. So I'm going to do it using purple felt. So this is a sheet of purple felt. This is European A4 size. Obviously, if you're in the States, you get it whatever size you can. You can get a front and a back from one sheet. Dead easy. So there's enough there to get a front and a back. Perfect. Um, and if you want to do a separate head, there's still enough room <laughs> to get a separate head out of both. Um, so what you need to do, or what I'm going to do, is I've got a dressmaker's or a tailor's white chalk pencil, and I'm just going to draw around the template, just lightly, and I'll do it twice. I'll just show you the line, dead easy to follow. And I'm going to do it twice. And then once I've drawn around completely, I'm 
I'm going to cut them both out just with a pair of scissors. So just for speed, because I've waffled long enough, what I'll do is I'll pop this on fast forward. I'm trying not to stretch the material while I'm doing it. So just doing light strokes. You can use a black pen. Just a bog standard um, pen will work as well. And then just use the size or the side that you've got the mark on on the inside of your doll when you come to actually stitch it together. So there we go. I'll just quickly run those down so much for a fast forward. Anyway, let me fast forward to the point where I've done this and then I'll just join with you again. Okay, so I've drawn around my two templates. Now all I'm going to do is just using a small pair of scissors. I've got some embroidery scissors here. I'm just going to go around and cut just on the edge. Follow that template all the way around and just cut the bits out. So like I said, this is probably going to be a little bit of a boring process, just watching somebody cutting out a bit of felt. So what I'll do is I will go away, cut these, and then I will join with you once I've got both pieces cut and trimmed out. Okay, so that's both of my templates cut out. I'll just drop that back over the top so you can see. I have gone maybe just a little bit um, outside, but I'm just going around the edge just with the brush that comes with the dressmaker just to remove the chalk that you can still see. I think that's pretty much it. So they will then become the front and the back. Just like that. So the trick with doing these is that you can then just take one and that's going to become the front and that's when you can then start to decorate because you need to start decorating the front of um, doing all the stitching and the decoration before you stitch them all together. So what I've done is I've gone away and I found a button or a couple of buttons. So we've got a large white one and a black one just for one eye, you'll see why. I've also cut out a little heart from some um, red felt that I've got. Got some, I've got lots and lots of different colours. This is um, this sheet I've got is wool felt, by the way. You can get acrylic felt. Now let me just show you a little demo. This one's wool, that one's acrylic. So the colour difference is a little bit more obvious. The acrylic one's darker than the actual wool wool one. They will work and cut the same. The wool one feels just a little bit smoother to touch, whereas the acrylic um, has a bit more of an open weave to it. They pretty much work the same. Um, it just depends on cost. Sometimes the wool ones cost a little bit more than the acrylic ones. The acrylic ones are ones you find probably more in um, in the craft store. So, to get started, I've got my needles. This is the Japanese sashiko needle for sashiko stitching, and it allows it's got a big eye, and you can see that, but it's also still sharp. Still sharp, it's still got it. Um, whereas some of the larger darning needles tend to be um, duller and you have more of a harder job getting the needle point through the material. Um, that's why when I created this I discovered that I needed some sharper needles because it was actually quite difficult. So let me just take that heart away for now. Um, and just position the eyeball, the button on the eyeball, where I want it to go. So about there. And I'm going to go in from the back. I've knotted my embroidery set. And this is just 
bog standard embroidery thread and I'll just go in quickly there. Now I've got that in position I'm going to add the other button. And I'm going to take that through the cross point of the eyeball and just pull it tight and then I'm going to drop the other button over the top and then that can go in like so straight in and then pull it tight. And I'm going to hold the buttons in place with my thumb and then go in with the needle, pull tight and then go across and pull tight. And then round the back I can just pick up he says not wanting to stab himself in the finger and just tie a knot. Come on. I think I've gone a bit too tight on that one. There we go. And then just loop it under. And then pull. My eyes nice and secure and I've knotted that so that can then get snipped. Okay so I've now got the eye in place I want to decorate and add the heart. So you can either do this in complementary cotton so I've got red cotton there or you can do it in contrasting cotton depending on which way you want to do it. Um, I think I'm going to do this in black so I'm going to continue with the black thread. There we go. And then I can thread my needle again. I've got a needle threader here even though the hole is still quite big on the needle there's no shame in using whatever equipment makes your life easier including needle threaders. There we go. Oops, move the mat and then just pop a knot in the end. When I watched Gina making one of her zombie dolls, she did this amazing thing with her fingers where she just rolled it in her hands and it knotted itself. It was almost like magic, like witchcraft. But I didn't want to say anything for fear of um, offending. Right, so I'm just going from the back through both layers. And then I'm going to go in at an angle. So I'm practically going back in underneath and then just tack it. And then I'm going to do the bottom of the heart. Yep, just about there. Just lightly. Feel the tension, that's it. And then back at an angle just like that and then I can just add a few more going around the heart so I'll just add another one a bit too far just reposition about there and then go back under at an angle just keeps it nice and tidy and then turn it round and 
and then back in again. About there. Okay, so it's now tacked bottom, top and the two sides. That pretty much should be enough, but if you want to go in and add a few more, just to make it look a bit more symmetrical, then that's entirely up to you. So again, this template, if you haven't got a template, you can always draw one by hand and um, use gingerbread man cutter as a kind of guide or if you're confident in drawing create your own just draw your own shape it's like we've said lots and lots of times when you're doing um, art journaling projects and and craft projects or art projects you know it doesn't matter Why hasn't that? That doesn't make any difference, it's all tagged in. Um, you know, you can do it a couple of times until you like everything, until you get the hang of things and it's and you practice. I practice doing this a couple of times and I'll show you the practice pieces after I've completed this one. Um, and the, the lengths or the steps you have to go to, to to get it right because even Leonardo da Vinci didn't get it right on the first time even he had to learn how to paint you know it's not you can't just start off on your first day and expect to be a master at it everybody has to practice regardless of who you are okay so that heart I'm happy with pretty much as it is there, but I do want to add a little bit of decoration to it. So what I want to do, I'm going to grab a very, very small, tiny little white button. And then I'm going to just push the needle through, probably about there. Thread the button on. Not quite in the middle. Oop. It's a bit more in the middle, I think. Let's see if we can get that. <laughs> it doesn't want to go on, does it? It don't want to go on. That's it, that'll do. That'll do nicely. And then through... we go and then I'm just going to loop that under and create a little knot here we go okay so we've got the eye on and we've got the heart on. So what I want to do now is I'll just give that a quick snip and then knot it again. And then I can have a look at the eye, the other eye then. So I'm going to come in about here And then come across in a diagonal. Like so. And then I'm going to come straight up using the back. So I'll keep it parallel with that stitch and the bottom of that one there. 
and then I can turn over and then take it straight across at a diagonal and there's his other eye. You'll see. Okay, but using the same um, thread I'm going to add in his mouth now and I'm going to go right the way across in one stitch to create his mouth. See, looks like a gingerbread man. And then I'm going to start adding in some stitch stitches just looped it around there for a second and then I'm going to go over the top and then I can come across one and then back over And then across, and then back over again, and there's his mouth. And again, I'm just going to just loop it under through the fabric, pull it through, create a little bit of a knot and just tie it off. I'm not pulling really, really hard because I don't want to pull the thread, the actual fabric thread. There we go. It's a bit, and of course all this is going to be hidden on the inside. So there's my zombie doll eyes and mouth. Now I want to add a little bit more decoration onto the front so I'm going to get some more black thread and this is just bog standard um, DMC embroidery thread and you can see this is black number 310 in case you're wondering So I'm going to add a little bit more decoration to his arm and his leg. I'm also going to pop a little bit on the back, just for variety's sake. So what I'll do is, because you've seen me stitch the mouth and the eyes already, I'll pop this onto fast forward. And then you can just watch as I add in some decoration onto his, onto his body. Start with his leg. Okay, and I'm back in the room. Right, so we've got front and back both decorated. It's now time to join them both together. So again, 
Um, grab that needle and I want some more black thread. So this time I'm going to go around the entire of the outside and I'm going to use blanket stitch. Now if you're not sure what blanket stitch is, don't worry, I will show you what to do. And then once I've got started, once again, I'll either pop it on fast forward because it is going to take me a good 20 minutes or so um, to go all the way around the outside. Or I'll just jump to the end where, or jump to the point where I'm ready for the next step. So I'll just re-thread my needle. Da, da, da. There we go. And we're in. Okay, what I like to do with these types of zombie dolls, the ones that I've practiced on so far, um, is start somewhere up here. So, and I'm going to start first of all by going in the back of the front piece and then laying it flat then coming back round again, taking both pieces. So your first stitch is just like a loop stitch, like so. The next stitch you go through both pieces again And then just before it pulls tight, you loop your needle back through the previous loop, or they've just created. That creates a kind of chain. There. And then on the next stitch, do the same thing again. Loop it. And then that creates a surface stitch along the seam. You want to get that bit there to start off with. Once you then start going all the way around, loop, pull, there you go. So you can see, now I like to go probably about an eighth of an inch, about five mils, before the next stitch. So I think it's far enough away, yet close enough so you can still see it as a bit of decoration. And then into the corner. Loop. Pull. But I'm not pulling too tight either. Because when you actually stuff this full of your filling, it'll need to expand just a little bit. So now, I'm just holding the two pieces of fabric together. You don't need to pin them together. And there's my loop. If you want, just lay it flat and then pull it in the direction away. As you're stitching round, you can just adjust the fabric to make sure they're together. And if you want, you can start from the back, position your needle, push through, and then lay it flat. And then just as the loop comes closed, pull it again in the direction of where you want to go. That could be an easier way of doing it. So you can see exactly where you're going, push through, Lay it flat. And then just as you're getting towards the end of your loop, pull it. Just like that. And you can follow it all the way around. Now you don't want to go right the way around. You need to leave a gap. Now I've started halfway up and I'm going to stop about halfway there. So I've got the top part of the head as my gap being able to fill it 
with the stuffing. But I'll join with you again when I've got all the way around there and we're ready to add the stuffing. So like I said, I shall probably do a jump and join with you once I've got it all stitched all the way around. But you can see it's not that complicated and it can't be that complicated because I can do it. Even if you've not stitched or done anything like this before, trust me, after a couple of attempts and a couple of goes, you'll be laughing. Because I was. I thought I'd never be able to do it. I'd never get it neat enough. It'd never be tidy. It would look a complete mess. But after my, I think, second attempt, which I will show you, I'll show you my first attempt and I'll show you the second attempt in a moment, once we've done this one, then you'll see that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so... We've got just about down to the first arm. So we're going to go carry on going all the way around, all the way up to about halfway to the head again, about there. So I will carry on and I'll stop boring the pants off here and I'll join with you when we're back at that stage. Okay, so I think that's just going to be the last stitch I do for the time being. And I'm just going to loop that round a couple of times and just tie a little knot in that, just so that it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm just going to just snip that off. Okay, so we're now stitched all the way around, just lift that up a little bit, so from there all the way around to there. So the top part of his head is open. So I'm going to use that to add the stuffing. Oh, which is here. So I got this, this is hollow fibre fill. So it's the sort of thing you have in, like it shows there, in cushions, in teddy bears, and that kind of stuff, 100% polyester. And this is a, I can't remember how many litres there was in this bag. Um, pack size, 10 litres by volume. Um, and you get a lot for your money. I didn't pay a lot for this. I'm not gonna use all this to stuff in either. Um, I'm going to start adding it in, in small pieces. So first of all, I want to just put my needle away and then I'm going to just add some of the stuff in, just with my finger. I'm just going to start poking it down through the neck and start filling out the body. Uh, just go all the way down with my finger pushing it down into the legs and start to fill the legs out 
it's still quite flexible. Grab some more and just add little by little in like so. And you get the feel really for how much you want to add in because obviously your stitches start to tighten up as you can see on the edges so you can pretty much work out how much more room you've got to add more fill in and I'm working my way up the body just adding in as I go like so poking it through start filling his tummy out and then I'm going to start moving some of the fibre across into the arms so I'll start off down here and then just with my finger just push the fibre into the arm like so now you can use a pencil or something like that I like to use one of those Dina Wakely tools just to push it down into the arm but you can use a pencil anything you like really okay so that's about right for that side so I'll start filling this side up so I'll just turn it over bring the fibre in and then loop it round Start filling in the arm, get your tool and just poke it in, there we go, and you can work it down, work it around until you start to plump out your little chap. push through and start packing out and filling out the body as much as you want. Don't like to overfill but a bit more down there into the legs. <laughs> okay so we're about up to the heart so at this stage, I want to add just something extra into it. So I have some little, little wooden hearts that I picked up from the craft store for next to nothing. I got like a hundred for about a pound, so they're about a penny each. And I'm just going to stuff that kind of parallel inside behind the heart that's on the outside so I know even if the heart comes off on the outside there's still one hidden and his heart's still in the right place on the outside on the inside sorry so pack him out pack him out okay so we're getting to the stage now where the head's starting to fill out a little bit and I can feel that little wooden heart just there just in the right place so now we need to start finishing off the stitching but now we've got most of that, that filling already started to come up into the head we can start to close the head up bring it round and then we can just fill in the last bits so I'll just grab some more black, black thread that should do us to go all the way around so I'll thread my needle and then I'll be back again 
ready to do some more stitching. Okay, so we stopped, we started there and stopped there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart again at this side. You can see all his brains coming out, look. That's not good. So I'm going to just start once again on the one thickness of material. And then I'm going to tuck that edge of the thread in. And then I'm going to come back round. And loop it closed. Move across, eighth of an inch, about five mils, and then just literally do what we did last time. We get a little bit of a cross, but that's okay, or diagonal line. And I'm just moving the filling out of the way. And again. Eighth of an inch, bring that loop down, and then just before it closes, and then you're back to your standard blanket stitch again. Because if you run out of thread halfway through or halfway around, that's just the way you can start off again. So I'll keep on going. until we've got about a couple of centimetres, maybe about an inch left. Around the head. Okay, so with the thread still attached, get some more of the fill in, and I'm just going to gently go in and pack him out. Just make sure that we've got plenty in there. Just a tad more. Okay, I think I'm happy with how much is left in, or how much is in there now. So we can just hold it shut with our fingers and just gently. Go around adding in the last few final stitches. The temptation is to maybe try and close up with larger loops just on the last few, but just resist that temptation and try and keep your stitch in as evenly spaced as you can all the way around. I think a couple more to go and then we should be done.
and then join up the last stitch and that's it I've now done a complete circle so I can just loop that around and then just add a knot to finish off. There we go. So we now have one little zombie doll pin cushion for the use of. <laughs> Quite quick, well, quick, as in, don't really take that long to do. Ooh. There you go. But also, they make really cute little gifts. So, as I was saying, once you actually mastered Gina's template, and you've kind of worked out what the shape is to get to do your man, or lady, depending on, you might want to give it some hair, um, you, you can pretty much customise what you're creating. I've done mine in purple, um, but you can do them in blue, which was another one of my practice ones. But if you want to use the skull that Gina has on her template, you can do that too. So this was attempt number one. That was attempt number two. See, on number one, I didn't kind of get my stitching correct. So I worked out how to evenly space the stitching on the first one. On the second one, I was pretty much more along the lines. He's maybe a little bit too fat. But once you've worked out the mechanics, once you've actually done it a couple of times and you can kind of see how it works, you can then start to expand a little further with the template. So once I'd worked out how to do that, I then redid the template and gave him horns and added a tail. And then after I'd done that one, I thought, well, seeing as I'd done um, the skeleton on the art journal page, I really had to do one out of the felt as well, but also, once I'd done that shape, I kind of worked out that if you can do whatever shape you want to for your pin cushion, why not go the whole hog and do a different shape altogether? So I've also done that one. But I didn't just stop there because once, like I said, once you'd worked out the mechanics on how to do different types of templates and how to um, how to put them together, it's easy to also then create a different shape as a pin cushion. And then the final one that I did, I started out with a piece of paper and worked out how to do Frankenstein's monster as well. Complete with hair. <laughs> so I had kind of been busy and over the last couple of weeks, I've built up kind of a little bit of a collection of different type zombie dolls and pincushions, all based originally on the template that Gina created. And oh, I've got one more to show you. Back in two secs. And I'm back. So just in case you're wondering whether or not you can deviate from this shape and whether or not that shape a little bit bigger works. Yes, it does. So I made this one and then Ian has snaffled him. He's pinched him, he's now sitting <laughs> on Ian's um, dresser. So this one is in kind of more of a, I'd say pomegranate purple color, more than anything. And that's based more on that shape of the one that I did rather than Gina's shape, which is a lot smaller, as you can see. But if you can expand and create your templates, enlarge them on a photocopier or on your printer, 
then there's no saying how big you can make your little pincushion dolls. So there you go. So that is day number six, I think. Yes, day number six on my seven days of Halloween. So that's how you can make a really cute zombie doll pincushion for yourself or to give away as little gifts. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that little zombie doll. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to visit Gina also over on her channel because I think she's showing you today um, the art dolls and stuff that she made while she was in lockdown uh, and also the coffin that she made to keep them all in as well. So pop over to Gina and show her some love too. And like I said, there is a link in the description area below this video if you want to see that. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. Ha, 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 ha,